कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फीजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन इन द न्यूज टू नाइट कपल फाउंड डेड इन सिंह अटोका एफ आर ए प्रायोरिटाइज रोड रेस्टोरेशन इन द नॉर्थ एंड पुलिस शेयर हीरो Police are investigating the discovery of two bodies in a home in Singatoka. Police confirmed that the husband and wife were found dead in a settlement in Lawai this morning. FBC News has spoken to villagers in the area who have told us that the couple were in their 60s and had been living in the area for over 20 years. Villagers found the two this morning and they claim the deaths could have occurred over the weekend based on the condition of the bodies. Villagers say there was a power outage out over the weekend in the area during the height of TC Ana. Investigations continue. There are concerns tonight that Lambasa will start running out of food and other supplies if the landslip in Korosomo isn't fixed quickly. Special Administrator Ami Koli says the main road link has been cut off, but the Fiji Roads Authority is acting quickly to provide alternatives. One shipping operator, meanwhile, plans to service Lambasa via the Malau jetty. This landslip on Korosomo Hill passing lane has severed connections between Lambasa and Nambuwalu. That is the heart line. You know, and with that cut off, basically it cuts off uh, supply of uh, stocks that are arriving through number Walu. I have been concerned about that road, piece of road for many years because we had a several engineers come in and they said it has to be fixed properly. You cannot just dump and keep on building on it. Number Walu is the main ceiling between the two main islands used to transport goods and people. The FRA says an alternative feeder road will be ready within days but with weight limits. It's going to go through Tambi and Anduri road and then from there to Korobu road and then comes back to Nova Wall. So that has got a restriction of 10 tons on one of the bridges over there. Counter Shipping is exploring the option of sailing to the Malau jetty which will more than triple the travel time. The travelling hours, at the moment the crossing, you know, you get a three hour crossing. So, but it's going to go up to Malau. You're going to have almost uh, maybe a 10-hour crossing from uh, Natovi. For the time being, Korosomo Hill passing lane remains closed to all traffic. And Kritika Kumar is live now for more on the road network around the country. Kritika, what is the overall assessment of roads post TC Ana? Edwin, the northern division is the worst affected, with multiple number of slips cutting the access to the major centres. Over the next few weeks, the FRA will be looking at reopening these roads or providing alternatives. However, the only issue now for the FRA is the continuous rain as it hinders the repair and rehabilitation. Infrastructure Minister Chone Osamate tonight advising that the FRA might have to reassi reassign priorities. Usumate says the authority is working to ensure their resources are better distributed to help restore accessibility to affected roads. So it's just about planning within the budgets that one already has, and that is what all our agencies will be doing. Lambasa will be a major priority for FRA as their road network suffered significant damage. In the meantime, work continues on all the other roads and crossings that have been damaged um, as a result of uh, TC Ana. And, uh, and, and because of the floods that have affected us recently. Kamal Prasad says FRA will work on roads drainage system to minimize chances of landslips in the future. Some places the roads are going down because we built the road there and there was a lot of water in there situation and I think it was done. So uh, we, what's going to happen in the future is we'll improve the drainage but it really can work as far as the uh, the probability uh, that the rainfall intensity we designed for half the length it's all going to be running on the road. FRA is now prioritizing all the main supply routes in Northern Division by clearing landslip and opening up access to a single lane. Kritika Kumar, FBC News.
Police officers and other first re responders went beyond the call of duty during TC Anna as they worked tirelessly to keep Fijians out of harm's way. FBC News Today managed to catch up with one police officer who made headlines for rescuing a baby. Apanisa Wangaidandova reports at the time Constable Kepu Mairata was helping those in need. His own in Lambasa were also enduring the strong winds which partially damaged their home. This was the shot that showed the nation that our officers in blue are our true protectors. But for the 21-year-old, he says he's leaving his dream job, saving lives and helping people. I went throughout the community just to imagine the, take a picture that I'm helping my own family. We managed to get some of the families that are seeking help because uh, the water almost uh, gone into the house. Constable Mairata was back at the scene, which on Sunday was like a raging river, and he met the little cutie, who he will never forget. I'll be happy if she realized that I'm the person that saved her during that time when Cyclone Anna came to the air. These police officers and other first responders risked their lives during natural disaster to help save Fijians in need of rescuing. They are also calling on the public to do their part and prioritize their safety in such times. Our life is also paramount, police officers. We all human. Even though in that kind of situation, we still give our life in order to save another person's life. The Fiji Police Force, the RFMF, and disaster response authorities are deployed nationwide. We've all seen the stunning images of their bravery over the last few days as they've come to the rescue of Fijians in badly impacted regions of the country. We are all grateful. The police force in recent time has been tarnished by some, but the acts of bravery, such as those by Mairata, keeps the confidence going for the public at large. Apeniso Ngrandovu, FBC News. And we now join Apanisa live. Apanisa, how far did these heroes go in saving Fijian lives at the height of Tisiana? Yes, Edwin, most of these police officers and other first responders um, left their individual families to evacuate hundreds of Fijians during Tisiana. These officers stayed true to their calling, and until today, most are still manning evacuation centers that are still accommodating over 14,000 affected Fijians. During raging floodwaters, several calls for help was received by the force and that of other disciplined forces and multiple efforts to, to move or to rescue these Fijians were made. And also, Edwin, the, this truly shows the Fijian spirit of leaving no one behind with the hope that we will rebuild back better. Edwin. Naka Panisa. Women, children and the elderly of Vunivaivai settlement in Lambasa had to be put inside a large cooking pot and taken to higher ground at the height of Tisi Ana. Resident Luke Nasaroa told FBC News that when the Ngawa River burst its banks around 2 a.m. Sunday, water gushed into their settlement and into their homes. Josiah Nanunga reports the floodwaters even entered the hall and church where they were taking shelter. This is the large cooking pot used by men of the settlements to transport the elderly, women and children to two homes that were not affected. The Ngawa continued to rise on Sunday morning. At midday, we saw the water level has reached a critical level and that's where we realized we need to start moving. As we came out, we saw that a nearby school was underwater and fiberglass boats were transporting some residents to safe locations. Nasaroa says they remained in the flooded village all of Sunday morning and were assisted by the RFMF engineers at around 3 p.m. We remained in the flooded area for about four to five hours after using big pots to transport the elderly, women and children. We are thankful that first responders came to our rescue in the afternoon. The town families were then taken in several boatloads to the Sukanibalu barracks and then to the Watunimbali church for shelter. We heard on the radio that the cyclone is approaching Yasawa and the Mamanudas. That's why we were not that prepared until we noticed the Ngawa River rises rapidly due to the heavy rain experienced in the north on Saturday night. That's when we decided to move. These residents have cleaned their surrounding yesterday from the mess caused by the severe flooding. Chosayenanuga, FBC News.
up ahead, Prime Minister tours affected areas and World Wetlands Day commemorated. I was in Delhi, 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 I was in Delhi. Welcome back. Prime Minister Vorengi Mbaini Marama has started his tour of areas affected by tropical cyclone Ana. Mbaini Marama's first visit was to Nangali Naitasiri, which has been badly affected by floodwaters that damaged a bridge, cutting off travel on the main route to Nosori and Suva for most villagers. Lina Rees reports. <laughs> Families sheltering at the Nangali village hall were reminded of the dangers of swimming in floodwaters. <laughs> Let's be very careful. Look after your children well and please keep them away from swimming in flood waters. Many of you must be aware of leptospirosis. Know that not many people can recover from this once infected. So please take care of your children. The Prime Minister also took time to acknowledge the sacrifice by first-time responders, adding that the best way to thank them is to adhere to advisories. The Fiji Police Force, the RFMF, and disaster response authorities that deployed nationwide. We've all seen the stunning images of their bravery over the last few days as they've come to the rescue of Fijians in badly impacted regions of the country. We are all grateful. The Prime Minister is also reassuring Fijians who are badly affected that help is on the way. Lina Rees, FBC News. Plans to relocate low-lying villages in Wanimbuka and Ra, severely affected by flooding, will not be possible at any time in the near future, despite frequent flooding in the past years. Turangani Koro of Wailatua No. 1 village, Isoa Tam Natambaleka, says relocation is a long-term plan requiring a lot of funding and proper planning. Details with Josiah Nanunga. Well, two are number two villages share a deep sense of connections with this location, which was inherited by their forefathers. Will not move. Flooding is nothing new for us. All we need now is assistance from relevant authorities for the construction of a proper evacuation center at a higher ground to accommodate the villages in times of a disaster. Nalalawa village elder Iliorevi Wangakeve says they've had several discussions about relocation. However, this is not a priority for them now. We've been having some discussion on that, but right now, villagers who intend to build a house in the village are advised to build them on higher grounds. We have learned from past disasters, and a lot of newly constructed houses are safely located at high elevations. These villages of Tombu are highlighting the need for more proper evacuation centers to cater for all villages. The safety of villages in times of disaster, particularly flooding, is critical. We are currently using our community hall as evacuation center and it is not conducive for over 50 villages. Most Fijians in the province have reacted quickly to rebuild and rehabilitate after the passing of Tisi Anna and are using whatever resources they have to sustain them. Shosayin Nuga, FBC News. Prime Minister Voreng Mbaini Marama says the frequent natural disasters are a clear indication of the threat of climate change. He stressed the need for Fijians to always be prepared while speaking to villagers in Walatua Wainimbuka. Lina Reese reports. The Prime Minister says the severe flooding brought by TC Anna took many by surprise. I myself could not believe the impact of the flooding in many parts of Fiji. There was devastating floods throughout the country. Viti Lebu, Bono Lebu, the Lau and Lomaiwiti groups were also not spared. Bainamarama also reminded villagers that Fiji is still in its cyclone season. We all know too well when there's a tropical cyclone, it will bring with it rain, flooding, strong currents, strong winds and damage. So make sure your homes are well secured and if need be, relocate to higher ground. The Prime Minister says Fiji will need to adapt and strategize better as there is no stopping in natural disasters in the future. Lina Reese, FPC News. 
On to other news quickly, the Ministry of Environment will conduct a clean-up campaign on a wetland site in Denarau Nandi as part of its commitment to the World Wetlands Day. Marking the uh, World Wetlands Day today, the Ministry stresses the importance of wetlands to the quantity and quality of fresh water and to our ecosystem. Jeshulal reports. Fijians are being urged to relook at the amount of waste and litter they produce as this sometimes ends up into rivers, lakes, streams and oceans. Wetlands give us a very useful range of environmental, social and economic services. Wetlands offer a significant range of benefits for the industry and trade. For example, they are home to nurseries for fish, other freshwater and marine life and form a critical feature in supporting Fiji's commercial and recreational fishing business. With the theme wetlands and water, Ministry will focus on removing algae and other litter including plastic bags and bottles illegally dumped by residents in some waterways. These wetlands contribute greatly to its biodiversity, which is one of our major invaluable assets. And actually play a, the role of a shield in most cases. But as wetlands get degraded, the ability to protect, the ability to shield also reduces. With almost a million population and over 330 islands, many Fijians are heavily dependent on wetlands to provide a source of livelihood, food and water. Jeshulal, FBC News. And Whitney is up next with business. Thanks Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, Lambasa businesses begin cleanup and donation to fund two Nailanga projects. Stay with us. Kumar Sami Naika, Gumbo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 me, Pura Na Jana Lage, Ami Bota Chha Lage. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dha. Majority of businesses in Lombasa town have suffered huge losses with their stock destroyed. With no water and electricity supply, business owners together with employees are currently finding it difficult to clean up their stores and service customers. Kelly Vadala reports. Chicken Express employee Mohamed Bashara says they will have to start from scratch. So we have to uh, we have our best to uh, the shop and uh, we are trying our best to Clean by today and waiting for the water authority to bring some water, electricity, GFL, bring some electricity so that we can uh, clean the shop nicely. Exotic Fiji Limited manager Daniela Rokowai says the current flooding is the worst Lombasa has seen over the years. It's not a good month for us since yesterday was our first uh, of February. So as you can see, we are start our day with a cleaning. All my staffs are doing the cleaning. And it's not an easy uh, day for us. Special Administrator Ami Kuali says it will take several days for Lombasa to return to normal. I walked in the shops and I was really, really saddened to see how much damage it has been caused to the stocks. The properties themselves have not been damaged, like buildings, etc., like Yasa, but the stock has suffered a lot. According to Kuali, the last big flood was in 2003 and it took them two weeks to return to normal. He hopes businesses will be fully operational in lesser time. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. U.S. stocks closed sharply high on Monday, led by gains in technology shares after last week's steep market sell-off. Lifting the market were mining shares, which rose as the retail trade in frenzy shifted to silver. Investors also kept an eye on talks over the latest U.S. COVID-19 relief package. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. Looking at the latest in markets, global shares rebounded from last week's steep sell-off while silver prices surged. Retail investors continued their social media-fueled battle with Wall Street to drive the precious metal to an eight-year high. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar bounced to a two-week high on weaknesses in the euro, Swiss franc and Japanese yen. This was supported by views that the United States has an advantage in growing its economy and vaccinating its population against COVID-19. 
The euro weakened after Germany reported that their retail sales dropped by an unexpected 9.6% in December after tighter lockdown measures choked consumer spending in Europe's largest economy. For tomorrow, the Reserve Bank of Australia is set to hold its February policy decision, so let's see how that affects demand for our trade partner currency. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar strengthened against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Chinese one euro and the Japanese yen. The Sangamoli was down versus the other currencies we cover. Prices were rising on the commodities market. Oil prices rose slightly to close at $54 a barrel. Gold rose a few dollars, closing at $1,861 per ounce. And silver closed at an eight-year high of $28.59 an ounce. Villagers of Nailangain Ba will be able to repair fishing boats through the $3,000 donation by Fiji Pine Limited. A check of $5,765 was handed to the village leader, Keravereli Reiseo, of which $2,765 will be set aside to purchase students' school items and uniforms. Nailanga village was also affected by floods as TC Ana passes over Fiji over the weekend. Reiseo says the donation will greatly assist students students in their preparation for school. The Fiji Pine Limited says this is part of creating value for the landowners. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening ahead in sports. Transfer issues for football stars. And selection process crucial for netball. This and more coming up. Three football players will learn their transfer fate after the Player Status Committee reviews their applications. The transfers of Lambasas Antonio Tuivuna, Sayrusi Naolombu of Suba, and Rewas Gabrieli Matanisinga in dispute. There are two separate claims of halting Nalambu's transfer, while Matanisinga has withdrawn his application to join Suba, creating a tricky situation since he signed and received money from the capital side. PGFA Chief Executive Mohamed Youssef says they will play by the rules and let the player status committee deal with them accordingly. In the case of Tuibuna, he says there are a lot of factors involved with his transfer application. The player status committee will first have to go back to the uh, Board of Control to rescind the earlier decision made in January 2020 in Lotoka where they, they banned the, him from taking any transfer because of his habitual uh, issues in every transfer window. Netball Fiji will employ a rigorous process to ensure they select the best players for the 2023 Netball World Cup. Regardless of seniority or track record, no one is guaranteed a place in the final Pearl squad until they prove their worth to selectors. Tali Matarukulo reports. This holistic approach taken by Netball Fiji is aimed at improving its world ranking. We will be looking at holistic players, players that will add value, and, uh, and, and they understand that uh, with our selection now it will be based on merit. And, uh, and, and they will have to work hard for their place. For now, the focus is on getting these players into the best shape. There's still a lot of work to do in terms of uh, fitness. Uh, the ladies are aware of uh, what's expected of them. And uh, we anticipate that they will uh, work uh, more on their fitness. National rep Aliti Torimbau believes it will take commitment and hard work to make the final cut. The firstly is experience and uh, skills and uh, it will be challenging for the older players and the young players like us if you want to earn our sport and uh, we have to train as hard as we can if you want to take that to be one of the 12 squad members with national coach Jenny Brazel expected to arrive on the 22nd of this month, Netters will be putting in the hard yards with the hope of impressing national selectors and making the final 12-member squad. Tali Terkula, FBC Sports.
National 800 meters record holder Isireli Naikele Kelevesi may join his former teammates soon. However, he won't be running competitively. Mentoring and sharing his knowledge with young athletes is the next step for Naikele Kelevesi. And with the Coca-Cola Games just around the corner, requests are already pouring in for the assistance of the Pacific Games gold medalist. I've, I've had friends calling me already that uh, they, they want for me to come and help them with their, with their children and, and some of the schools as well. And uh, most of my ex-teammates from, from before, they all coaches in a lot of schools in Fiji and they already, they already approached me you know, to come over and, and see them and maybe we can help each other out. The Mothe team uh, featured in the Cricket Fiji Association Cup Challenge at Albert Park today, earning a lot of respect from fans and everyone involved. While their family in Laos were getting their lives back together following tropical cyclone Yasa, the players were given the island's blessings to represent their village on the mainland. Akula Dama with the story. It's their passion for the sport that has brought them to the mainland despite the situation back home due to a natural disaster. Indeed, um, Modi, uh, this is the sport they normally play back in Modi. It's uh, cricket and they love their cricket. Uh, they came in uh, two weeks ago and they have been uh, preparing for the last uh, week or so in uh, Suva. The Modi team is made up of players from the village. Only two players are based here in Suva. They left the island of the tropical cyclone Yasa and they are also here with the blessing of their high chief. After TC Yasa, they weren't sure they'd come, uh, but for the sake of cricket, they all got together and supported by the Ramasi uh, more they has made it here uh, with, uh, with, 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 with a request that as soon as they play, they go return to help with their um, rebuilding in the village. Yeah, it means much the team because uh, it comes with the blessing of their chief. The next challenger later this month will be Onui Lau, Akui Lavama, FBC Sports. The Wainrau Saw Sevens team from Sawani Village in Naita Siri has a much bigger goal heading into the Mobile Uprising Sevens tournament, formerly known as the Waimanu Sevens team. Once a dominant figure on the local scene, coach Waisale Mbose says Wainrau Saw hopes to restore some pride for the province when they compete at the Uprising Sevens this weekend. He adds the opportunity to compete against the best teams will set a solid foundation for a successful future. The province of Naita City has produced some of the best rugby players in the country. For instance, the 1998 team that did throw in the 15th cold. So we are now trying to put us back there and showcase what we were once known for. Former Wallabies fullback Israel Folau could return to the NRL. In play of the day, Leeds United's Patrick Bamford scoring one of the best goals of the English Premier League this season against Leicester. After setting up the first, Bamford got the goal his performance deserved with 20 minutes remaining when he fired into the top corner. That's it from Sports Tonight and New Media. Automakers Ford plan to branch out into software and cloud computing. Find out more after the break. Mar Sani Naik hai, Bombo Alibu Lato ka. Radio Fiji 2 mein pura na gana lage, hume bhot acha lage. Radio Fiji 2, desh ki dhadkan. Welcome back. In new media, the Ford Motor Company will soon tap into the software, artificial intelligence and cloud computing offered by Google to develop new customer services and modernize internal operations. Across most of Fiji, there was some relief today with sunshine in many areas. In the west, they had a mixture of sun and occasional brief showers. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, early morning cloudiness and light rain gave way to a generally sunny afternoon and in the north, occasional brief showers under cloudy skies. At sea, northerly winds at 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas. T turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 4.27 a.m. followed by high tide at 10.49 a.m. Tomorrow, sunrise is at 5.53. The outlook for tomorrow is generally fine weather. 
Thursday should once again see mostly fine weather with scattered showers in the east and the chance of a thunderstorm late in the day. In Fijian Pulse, we ask, should those who disregard weather advisories be taken to task? They should be penalized because they are risking their own lives. Parents should be more responsible with their children or be penalized. The advisories are given for a reason and not adhering to it is like going against the law. They should be taken to task. Warnings came in advance already. And recapping our main stories, couple found dead in Singatoka, FRA prioritizes restoration in the north and policeman shares heroic tale. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should those found swimming in flooded areas be prosecuted? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day, take a look at this picture of a beautiful golden rays of sunshine featuring Tanoa on a ledge at Momi Bay. This photo was sent in by Daniel. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Podemanda. मार सामने नाइक है बॉम्बो अलीबू लटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन